Grace to you and peace in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to Easter Sunday worship at First Presbyterian Church of Warminster. Obviously our building is still closed to worship and meetings, but nothing can keep us from gathering to proclaim the good news that Christ is risen from the dead. A few announcements to share with you. Uh, we have been asked to pray uh, with Nancy as she prays for her mother Marjorie, who is in a nursing home uh, retirement facility where the first positive case of the coronavirus has been diagnosed. As you can imagine, that is a, a very um, vulnerable time uh, when that takes place uh, in nursing homes and retirement communities. There are only 76 residents there, so we do keep Marjorie um, who is 96 years old in our prayers as well as her neighbors at the nursing home. And also a message from Sue to thank all of you for your condolences for the cards and letters that you have sent her as she continues to grieve the death of her mother Marge. Special thanks for today's worship go to our director of music, Dave Sathra, and our organist, Kathy Worth Balkus, who have made sure that our music has remained um, a, a vital part of this online worship. And I know that it's a special comfort to those of you who would much rather be with us in the sanctuary. And during this Easter worship, Frank Balkus will be playing flute as one of our musical pieces with the piano. Also, thanks go to Patty Hudson to make sure that the sanctuary is uh, decorated for the pictures that you see online, and also to Carol Wagenheiser, who has been our uh, technician to make sure that these online worship services keep happening. You will see uh, two important things happen during, at the beginning of, at the end of worship. Our call to worship, uh, you will see many familiar faces, uh, but I am not, uh, you can't see my face because I am standing outside a mausoleum at the Laurel Hill Cemetery in East Falls. Obviously, this was pre recorded. I am standing and filming this mausoleum uh, to represent the empty tomb, and you will see that on the uh, bottom right corner of um, the grid of faces that you'll see. And at the end of worship, as is our tradition at this church, Kathy will play the Hallelujah Chorus uh, musical accompaniment, and we hope that you will all sing along as you normally do on this day at church. So let us begin our worship with the chimes. Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed. Before turning to scripture, let us pray. God, our helper, 
by your spirit open our minds and our hearts that as your word is proclaimed this resurrection day we may live in the resurrection life of our risen lord jesus christ amen our old testament lesson is from the 31st chapter of jeremiah verses 1 through 6. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus, says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Happy Easter, everybody. What are we celebrating today? Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. That's great. We are celebrating that Jesus came and walked among us. And taught and healed. And then he was gone, killed by people who thought they needed to protect their power. And by crowds left and souls be talked into turning against Jesus. That day was very dark and very sad. Our hearts were broken and we felt empty. But that was Friday. And today is Sunday. Everything is different. Jesus is alive. Because Jesus is alive, we are Easter people. We have hope and joy and new life. We are healers and peacemakers. We are people who love instead of hate, forgive instead of, of get even. We are Easter people. Alleluia. 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 Jesus is risen. Alleluia and amen. Hear now the good news from the Gospel of Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. The angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear, and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. 
And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. So two days have passed since Jesus died on the cross. It's been two days since his disciples lost their friend and teacher, the one whom they had hoped was God's Messiah, the one for whom they left everything behind to follow. And just, just a few nights ago, he demonstrated the humility that God desires for human life by kneeling down before them and washing their feet. That night in the upper room culminated everything Jesus had taught and shown his disciples throughout his ministry. And within less than 24 hours, he was snatched away from them, tortured, humiliated, and killed. Their Lord is dead. The light of the world is extinguished. The living water has run dry. He is gone forever. The light of the world is extinguished and the example that he set as the way, the truth and the life was told to the disciples while he was with them. But now that he is gone, they have learned only by what happened on Good Friday that the way leads to suffering, the truth leads to rejection, and the life is defeated by death. Now you and I are well aware of what happened on that Friday. The Gospels give us very vivid details. But what about that Saturday, the day after Jesus dies? What was that day like for the disciples? What was that day like for you? How was your holy Saturday? What did you do yesterday? What did you think about? Well, my guess is that this holy Saturday was unlike any we have ever experienced. Usually we spend at least a portion of the day between Good Friday and Easter, preparing our homes for family gatherings to eat together or to choose what we will wear to church the next day. Or we might be at the church on Saturday, preparing for the children's annual egg hunt or watering the flowers that have been dedicated. But this year, for obvious reasons, Holy Saturday was different. Many of you were in lockdown at your retirement communities and nursing homes, isolated from your families. Several of you were still grieving loved ones who have died within the past few weeks, unable to gather with family and friends to celebrate their lives. One of you worried and prayed for your 96-year-old mother at the news of the coronavirus case diagnosed where she lives. I hope most of you found ways to stay in touch with your loved ones. Those of us who enjoyed yesterday's Zoom chat at one o'clock celebrated Walt's 96th birthday with him, so there was joy. But many of us have long since lost track of time and didn't even know that yesterday was Saturday, much less that it was Holy Saturday. So perhaps you have tuned in to this online Easter worship to find some hope and some comfort in the resurrection promise that whatever burden you are carrying, whatever separation you are enduring, whatever bad news is breaking your heart. You are here because you know, in some small sense, even if not very much, 
that nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And nothing can separate us from each other. Because although we cannot celebrate this day together in person, we trust that God's spirit is holding us together. Now, all four Gospels are silent about exactly what happened that day between the crucifixion and the resurrection. Now, we know that in 1 Peter, there is a comment on what happened that day, but the Gospels don't say anything. The only thing they tell us is that it was the Jewish Sabbath, the day set aside each week to honor the seventh day of creation when God rested from God's labors. And because Jesus died just a few hours before the Sabbath began at sundown, there was barely enough time to prepare his body for burial. So had Joseph of Arimathea not intervened and used his influence to gain Pontius Pilate's permission to take the body, there's no telling where the body of Jesus might have ended up, much less how it might have been treated. So with little time to spare, Joseph took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped his body in a linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb, and rolled a great stone to cover the door. Three women, all of them named Mary, were there to witness the burial. Then sundown came, the Sabbath began, and everyone went home. And we hear nothing more from the Gospels until the day of resurrection. But if we read between the lines of Matthew's Gospel, we know that Roman soldiers are standing guard at the tomb that Saturday because those who wanted Jesus dead were afraid that all of his talk about being raised on the third day might inspire his disciples to steal his body and then claim that their dead friend had risen. So Pilate sends a guard of soldiers to seal the stone that covers the tomb, making it impossible for anyone to go in or to come out. They seal the tomb and then they stand guard. And so nothing has changed since Friday. The world is still hopelessly lost. His disciples are still in hiding. The religious leaders who rejected him are still blind to what God was doing right before their eyes. The Roman Empire is still in charge and Jesus is still dead. Evil and sin and death once again have triumphed. And once again, God's passionate love for the world has been rejected and nothing has changed. So on the morning of the third day, two of the women returned to the tomb for no other reason than simply to look at it and to wail to mourn the death of their dear friend, to mourn the death of their hopes that the Messiah had come, and to mourn the world that might have been and now never will be. But as they arrive to the tomb, suddenly everything changes. The earth is jolted with a quake as the angel of the Lord descends from heaven, rolls back the stone, and then sits on it. And that's when the soldiers start shaking. Pontius Pilate may have been all powerful as he sat on the judgment seat and sentenced Jesus to death. But Pilate is no match for God's messenger sitting on that stone that sealed the tomb as though it were a throne. But the soldiers aren't the only ones who are afraid. When the angel tells the women that Jesus is risen and to go tell the disciples to go to Galilee to meet him there, 
The women leave the tomb quickly, we are told, with great joy, but also with fear. They too are shaken. But on the way, Jesus intercepts them, repeating the words of the angel, the words that God speaks to God's people time and again throughout scripture, do not be afraid. Now, fear is not an emotion we normally associate with Easter, is it? We emphasize the joy of this day with our hymns and liturgy, with flowers, with music filling the sanctuary, even with the clothes we wear. Yet we rarely pause to think about what made that day fearful as well. What are these women afraid of? Jesus' promise that he would be raised on the third day has happened. Why would they be afraid? Now, the Roman soldiers have good reason to be afraid because worldly power will always shake with fear when confronted with God's power. So why are these women afraid? I imagine that at least some of their fear comes from hearing both Jesus and the angel tell them that they have a job to do, which is to go, go and tell, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Go. That simple command opens the gate to life life as it should be lived in the power of the resurrection. Go means that the resurrection isn't about a happy ending, but a whole new beginning. Go means that the resurrection isn't just something that happens to Jesus, it happens to us as well. We are no mere spectators of that first Easter morning. We too have been given marching orders to go to tell so that they can see me. So the two Marys aren't shaken by a worldly fear, but a holy fear. Because we are well aware that the world remains shrouded in darkness wherever there is violence, suffering, and rebellion against God's righteousness. We too, at times, are afraid to go and tell. We identify with that famous phrase written by the late author, Barbara Johnson, that we are an Easter people, yet we live in a Good Friday world. And so we shouldn't be surprised if carrying the gospel into the world makes us fearful. Yet notice, how when Jesus greets the two women, he doesn't greet them by shaking his finger at them for being afraid. He greets them instead with compassion. Don't be afraid, he says. To paraphrase, paraphrase the prophet Jeremiah from our Old Testament lesson, there is always grace to be found in the wilderness. Grace abounds in the upheaval. The disciples will see that when they make it to Galilee and find him there just as he said they would. Yet even then, the disciples' joy is mixed with fear and doubt. But just as he does with the two women, Jesus doesn't wait for them to calm down or to get their act together or to muster their bravery. He just tells them to go, make disciples of all nations. But they and we are not called to go out alone because with his command to go comes a promise, a promise that sustains us and our going forth from this day of resurrection. And that promise is and always will be Remember, I am with you 
always to the end of the age. Friends, there is grace to be found in the wilderness. Grace abounds in the upheaval. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Let us pray together. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death, you raise us with him and renew the gift of life within us. Increase our minds and hearts in the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. We lift up to you the needs of our world this day for all who live in fear, for those who risk their own lives to protect their neighbors, for those who suffer isolation for the good of the community. We give you thanks for those in this congregation who 
even though we cannot be together, continue to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. We give you thanks for the lives of those recently departed from their loved ones through death, but who now live with you in eternity. Continue to comfort their families with your promises, especially Jim and Dee, Sue, Charlene, and their families. By your spirit, Lord, lift us from doubt and despair and set our feet in Christ's holy way that our lives may be signs of his life and that we all may show forth his love Praise, glory, and thanksgiving to you, holy God, in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. peace, go in power to love and serve the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.